Now, are we on? Are we good? Is it happening? Am I podcasting right now? I got so much shit on my table. I definitely gotta clean this weekend. Um, what's today, man? It's Thanksgiving. It's eleven o'clock at night. I just got home. Happy Thanksgiving to all you beautiful motherfuckers. All you cute looking beautiful people out there with your, with your fucking smiles and your nose and eyes, faces and shit. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Even if you got family, you know. Even if you ain't got no family and you at your motherfucking house not doing shit except chilling. Watching a little bit of football, drinking a little bit of beer. Or you're one of those people that are just super negative and you're just like, fuck the world. I'm just going to be angry. Whatever. I'm just rambling. Happy Thanksgiving to you motherfuckers too. Okay? Okay. My name is Javon. This is the podcast called What Crazy People Think. I got my incense going. I got to crack open this beer. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What beer is it that I am drinking this evening? It's Elysian. Elysian Brewery. This is this is Pacific Northwest beer. This is shit that's brewed here in Seattle, Washington. Yeah, yeah, some gangster shit. Immortal. It's called the Immortal IPA. It's good stuff. So, kind of. Um, I have some left over. Because last night's Friendsgiving, I, uh, me and my friends, we bought some pizza and I bought a rack of beer, 24 pack from Costco. Uh, drinking warm IPAs is trash. Don't ever do that shit in your lifetime because you're not going to have a good time. Uh, if you're going to drink an IPA, make sure the motherfucker's ice cold or you're not going to enjoy it. Okay. Okay. But anyways. How's everybody's days going? Hope it's going well. I mean, some of y'all, by the time you listen to this, it's going to be tomorrow. For one, uh, some of y'all are going to go out and do some Black Friday shopping like a motherfucking animal. If that's the type of thing you want to do, go ahead and do it. I don't support that shit because it's just dangerous. Hold on. This light's bothering me. Hold on. Set the fucking mood, Javon. Set the mood. So, I have my kitchen. I, I, I podcast from my kitchen. <laughs> for the dining room table. Um, Well, some of the times. Other times I'll do the friends. Not with friends. We're either in a garage or to Darwin's living room. But when I podcast alone, I'm either in my bedroom or I'm on the dining room table in the kitchen slash dining room. Anyways, uh, yeah, man. So how's everybody's, you know, how's your days going? Did you see grandma? Did you see your aunt and uncles? Did you see your cousins? Did you get high with your cousins and, uh, you know, go on a quote unquote walk, smoke a little bud, get a little appetite before you went out into the kitchen and went ham off of, um, aunt Pam's mac and cheese? Hmm. Is that what you did? I hope so. So my day, my day was long as fuck. It was it was longer than a work day, it seemed like. But I loved it all, though. So what did I do today, man? Uh, I woke up, hung over to a motherfucker. Felt like shit. But I went to the gym, got a little, you know, got hydrated. Uh, got, I got a Red Bull. Got some water. Hit the gym. Yeah. And what was fun, but it wasn't funny. It was just weird. So, I'm at 7-Eleven, right? I'm at 7-Eleven getting my gallon water and a Red Bull for the gym, whatever. So, I'm in my car after I buy all my shit. And I'm just chilling. But, you know, I'm texting my friends because I, I missed a bunch of texts and shit. And um, this, like, ladies walking across the street. She looks low-key homeless. And she walks across the street. And she, like, walk, like walks up to my car, right? She goes, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Like, I'm trying to ignore her, right? Because I don't, I don't, 
Like, no offense to the homeless. I don't really fuck with the homeless people. Because a lot of them are really, they just sketch me out. I'm I'm the type, I don't fuck with strangers, really. Like, unless you look like a cool, wholesome dude, you might be a serial killer. But if you seem really wholesome and nice and cool, then I can fuck with you and be like, Oh, hello, sir. How are you doing today? Or, hello, ma'am. It's a, it's a beautiful day today. You know, shit like that, right? But homeless people kind of freak me out. Especially the ones that just look sketchy as fuck. Right, so this old ass lady looking hella sketch. She just, excuse me, sir, excuse me, blah, blah, blah. and my windows are up, windows are tinted. How do you see me? Right, I'm on my phone, whatever. Um, so I roll down my window a little bit. When you're dealing with people, you gotta roll down your window a little bit. So I rolled it down a little bit, and um, she's like, uh, I'm looking for my friend JC. And, you know, can I use your phone to call? Can you call my friend JC and to see where he's at? Because I'm waiting on him. He's a guy with a big backpack and he should be here right now. No, no, no. And I'm like, what? That's I said, what? Who? JC. In my head, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Is this a sign? Is this a fucking sign from the Lord saying I need to help this homeless lady? Right. That's what I'm thinking in my head. Right. So nice, Javon. Should have been like, yeah, I can call your friend, see where he's at, so you can, you know, get your shit and do whatever the fuck you're about to do, right? But then on the other hand, I was like, I don't want some uh, random motherfucker having my phone number. And, like, if it was, like, a teenage kid or, like, a kid, you know what I mean, or a young adult or some shit like that, for some reason, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more susceptible, if that's the right word to use. I'm, I'm cool with that shit, like, oh, you know. Yeah, we call your fucking friend. I don't care. Let's call him. But like this old ass, like sketchy person was like, "Can I use your phone to call JC?" I'm like, "No." I told her straight up, my phone didn't work while I'm on my phone. Right? I could have just been like, "Oh, it's an iPod. This shit don't work." Sorry, because you know they look alike now. But uh, so I told her my phone didn't work. I'm sorry. Maybe you can use the phone inside of the Seven Eleven I was just at, and she was like. Motherfucker, your phone works. They don't you. They don't let me use the phone in Seven Eleven. I know your phone works. And then she just walked off. And I was like, see, see, these motherfuckers is crazy. Like straight up, me personally, how I felt at the time was, I don't want this person to use my phone. Oh, I don't want to call this random ass number. And now this random ass number has my number. And then I'm thinking, right? Because I've been listening to, I listen to a lot of like. Just I listen to people that always get me thinking. Like I just I think ahead of things, even though I I think too deep and ahead of situations. So I'm thinking, all right, if I call this motherfucker JC, right, he's got my number now, right. On top of that, if this nigga JC is connected to some bullshit that I don't want to be connected to, he gets hemmed up by the cops. Cops gonna call me talking about. Do you know a nigga named JC? And I'm like. No, I don't know no motherfucker named JC. I just had to call him for this homeless person that was harassing me. And then I have to go through that whole situation, and I don't got time for shit like that. So I just nipped it right there, and I was just like, you know what? No, you can't use my phone. It don't work. So I don't know if that's... So Mary, my friend, you obviously Mary from the podcast, Night with Friends, she's like really like karma shit, you know? Like, I don't know if that was my good or bad karma Maybe I should have helped that lady and called her motherfucking friend JC, but maybe I shouldn't have because I could have gotten to some shit that I didn't want to be a part of because he has my phone number and people see that he's, I've called him and they're going to be like, you called this motherfucker for some drugs or something fucking dumb and I don't got time for it. So I was just like, nah, my phone don't work. So I felt bad for a moment and then once I got to the gym, I totally forgot about it until just now. So. All I'm saying out there, don't listen to me when people ask you, hey, can I use your phone? Can I use your phone to call my motherfucking friend, JC? And, you know, if you want to let them use your phone, go ahead. Me, on the other hand, no, I ain't going to do that shit because it's, people are crazy. Times are crazy. That motherfucker, JC, could have been a runaway uh, fucking fugitive, killed 18 cats talking about I just called him and the cops at my house now talking about do you know a nigga named JC and I'm gonna be like no I don't know no JC guy who the fuck you talking about they're gonna be like well you called him and I'm gonna be like oh well shit I shouldn't let that lady use my phone so that's just me
whatever, paranoid-ish, whatever. I try to watch my back. I try and think about situations before I get myself into them. Simple as that. Whatever. Whatever. But, uh, yeah, man. So I went to the gym. Right? Got a little workout in. Did shoulders and legs. Okay. That was a good time. And then uh, after that, I went home. No. On my way home, I had to stop at Walmart. And in my head, I'm like, man, Walmart might be a shit show. Because any Thanksgiving Day, any store you go to that's open, it can potentially be a bad time. Right? Because it's going to be all these people doing last minute shit. You're going to be pissed off in a long ass line because they're going to obviously be understaffed because Walmart got fucking 20 checkout stands and only two of them work. So, you know, I, I, so I was already mentally prepared to go through that. Right. So whatever. So hold on. So I go to Walmart because I was supposed to go to two houses today. One of my best friend's house and um, my cousin's house. So my best friend, his uh, his uh, his old lady, she texted me. She was like, hey, before you come over, can you bring, uh, yeah, can you bring, or no, she didn't text me. Can I bring some? I asked. I was like, hey, do you need anything? She was like, yeah, can you get pie? Because we didn't get pie. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. So boom, I go to Walmart find motherfucking pumpkin pie and then i found a hoodie so i was like i need to get another sweatshirt got a hoodie just in case y'all gave a fuck they got good fruit of the loom hoodies are good you know low priced hoodies 10 bucks got myself a nice little cozy thing probably gonna wear it tomorrow i don't care so uh yeah did that whole thing and then i went home showered got ready for the day and I went to my guy's house, kicked it with the kids. He had two boys, kicked it with them, hung out, um, ate some, ate, I didn't even really eat Thanksgiving food because he makes, he makes gumbo, right? The gumbo he makes is fucking fire, right? Because like the only time I eat gumbo is that my friend makes it, right? So he made it, shit was phenomenal, but I was full as fuck because I think, Probably today and yesterday was the first time I, I've eaten carbs since maybe, like, last weekend. So, like, obviously, um, if your body's used to eating carbs and all that shit, then your stomach's all expanded and just ready for it. You know what I mean? But since I haven't been eating carbs, I obviously wasn't ready for all this all this carbohydrates that's going to enter my body. So, I, got, I was full as fuck off of one bowl of gumbo. I didn't know what the fuck hit me, right? It was good as shit, too. It was good as hell. So I ate the gumbo, kicked it, you know, got a little to-go plate, you know. That was good, you know. And then um, I had to go to my cousin's house. So I get to my cousin's house. Her side of the family is there because it's uh, she's the cousin on my mom's side. So my mom wasn't able to make it. And some other relatives weren't able to make it. So, it was my cousin's, her side of the family. So, like, her sister was there. Her dad was there. My aunt was there, though, obviously, because that's her mom. She was there. My uncle, my other uncle was there. And some other cousins was there. So, it was a good-ass time. And um, we just kicked it, man. Like, um, I, I just got home from that, actually. So, I got there around 4.30. And now it's 11.00. So I've been there for for a good amount of time. We watched some football. Uh, my cousin's fiance it was a good ass time, just fucking laughing and folks screaming, shit like that, having a good ass time, uh, enjoying ourselves. You know, like you're supposed to do on Thanksgiving when you with your family. So uh, my other cousin, which is hella funny, because you re- what's weird is that when you grow up in places and you're still there. You know, uh, or not even if you're still there, but if you grow up in, you know, grow up in places and just people connect and shit. And then like this dude I met. So, boom, run it back. This is like last year. I'm playing basketball um, in Lakewood. One of my guys, you know, we're hooping it up. I'm not even good at basketball. They just needed somebody to play. So I was just like, fuck it, I'll play. So I went out there and hooped with them for a little bit. I met this dude, right? 
It's like, oh, what's up? My name is Javon. He said his name so and so. So so and so, we find out is basically my cousin because my main cousin, whose house I was at for Thanksgiving, her sister is like a little older than her, and she had a son, and her son was the guy I met when I was playing basketball. So I was like, oh shit, you basically my cousin. So like since then, or since like I found out who he was related to, since I found out my cousin was his aunt. Like, we've been, like, a little cooler now. Like, oh, shit. Like, I knew you before I found out I was basically related to you. And it's just it's fucking hilarious. So, I was with him. We are kicking it or whatever. T- t- trying to turn up. I can't. I don't know what it is. I, don't, I think my tolerance is a lot higher now. As I've gotten older. And I've been drinking so much more. Not like more. Not like that. You know what I mean? But I just know how to space my shit out. Like, I'm not, I don't go, I don't go crazy, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna just go shot at the shot, beer, shot, shot, beer, 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 shot, shit like that no more. I used to do that back in the day, but now it's just like, you know, I'm gonna sip on this whiskey, I'm gonna sip on this beer, it's gonna take some time, I'm not gonna get fucked up though, because I know how to time my shit, so, but he was, he was trying to turn up, he was like, yo, you trying to get, trying to take a shot? I was like, fuck it, take a shot, fuck it. And then uh, I was sipping whiskey all night with my relatives. And my aunt was there. My aunt, she's never seen me drink before. So I was little, I was really apprehensive about it. But then once I saw her husband, my uncle, fucking drink some wine. I was like, all right, fuck it. The coast is clear. I'm drinking some whiskey. Fuck it. So, and plus, I'm grown as fuck now, too. I'm 26. About to be 27 in five months. So, It's just funny. It's just funny when you get at a certain age, like, and when you're still in your 20s, right? When when people still reference you as a, oh, he's still a baby, blah, 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 you're in your 20s, whatever. And, like, you see these older people that, you know, have authority, basically, your aunt, your uncle, you know, and then, like, you never, like, tr- drink alcohol in front of them. And you're thinking, like, oh, shit. I don't want to get in trouble. And that's like, it's like burned into your mind from all these years of being a kid. Like you can't drink that shit type of stuff. But then once you turn a certain age, in all honesty, they don't care. Like they're not going to trip about it. Um, unless like it's something they don't do. But then like, if they just drink some wine or, you know, the husband or their wife drinks some wine or drinks a beer, shit like that, then the close is clear. You can do whatever the fuck you want and not feel any type of way about it. But it's just always that thought that's in your mind because you're always thinking like, oh, that's my aunt or my mom, you know, whatever. So, yeah, at first I was like, I'm not going to drink. So I showed up with fucking sparkling cider, knowing damn well I wasn't going to drink it. But I showed up with it because I didn't know because it's my first time going to my cousin's house for Thanksgiving. So I'm like, I don't know if like if they're going to be drinking alcohol or, you know, they're going to be drinking sparkling cider or motherfucking juice. I don't know. So I came up with sparkling cider. You know, good gesture. You don't want to come empty handed to some shit. You know what I mean? So came up with that. And then I, pu- I, put the, I put the sparkling cider on the counter. And I see, like, whiskey. I see fucking brandy. I see fucking vodka. I see a bunch of shit. And I'm like, okay. I know what I walked into. They know, all right, we're going to have a good time tonight. So, uh, yeah. So I fixed my plate. Obviously, I had to fix my plate after I said hello to everybody. You know, I saw saw people I haven't seen in a minute. So, I was just like, you know, I said hello. I fixed my plate. That was it. Ate some food. You know, had a good time. Watched some football. Um, and just kicked it for like four or five hours. And um, enjoyed myself. So, uh, definitely more, more of that to come in the future. Uh, I've realized like me being 26, you know, family, you have, you like, if you know, like, it's hard to explain. Cause like my family background on this side where I'm at up here, it's really strange. There's a lot of weird things that's gone on over time where it's just, you can't really explain it because it has nothing to do with you. It just has to do with them. So it's kind of like our family's really spread out. Um, not a, 
not a whole lot of coming together often, but like we'll try, but the shit's just like, it's really hard to do. So I've told myself, okay, I'm my own person. I'm not going to wait on them or that person for me to see them. I'm not going to wait for Christmas or Thanksgiving or a holiday to see these people that I'm related to that I share blood with. You know what I mean? So I always just put it on my pump. I can't talk. I put it on for myself to be like, you know, I'm going to make an effort every now and then to see my relatives, see my family members, just because, you know, you don't have the, you don't have all the time in the world to just put that shit off all the time, you know? So my cousin, she had Thanksgiving at her house. Um, I texted her, and I was like, you having Thanksgiving at your house? She was like, yeah. I was like, all right, what you need me to bring? She's like, you don't need to bring nothing. I was like, all right. So now it's that, because, you know, you only have one of these relatives. You know, you only have this one cousin. You know, you're not going to have another one of that same person that's in your life. You know what I mean? So you want to be able, you want to see these people as often as you can not like too often but as, as when you have the opportunity to see these people in your life go and see them don't be putting that shit off over nonsense or like you know because i could have easily just stayed home or i could have easily just stayed at my my best friend's house and be like fuck it i'm just gonna stay at his house and kick it you know but i'm like no i got my other family i need to see them and that's what i tried to do so uh, i did that just got home uh, Black Friday shoppers, y'all motherfuckers is crazy. Why are you crazy? Because it's raining right now. I'm in Washington State. It's raining cats and dogs up here. I guess it's, I guess it's all up and down the Pacific Northwest right now. Because one of my guys, he's in, uh, he's in Seaside, Oregon right now, and he said it's fucking storming outside. And I'm like, all right, so yeah, it's pretty bad out here, and, like, as I was driving home, I was passing by a Target, and there's people standing in line, and I'm like, you motherfuckers are crazy, like, I don't got time for that shit no more, um, yeah, I feel like Black Friday shoppers are just animals, like, the first and last time I went Black Friday shopping, uh, no, nah, that's, that's not the last time. But, like, there's other times I went Black Friday shopping, but I didn't go, like, early as fuck. Like, I literally... No, I went twice. Three, two or three times. But the other times I would go, I would go, like, that day, but I'd go, like, after the rush. So I'd go, there were ain't shit at the store still, but they still got, like, little deals still going on. Like, I know, like, if I go to the Nike outlet, they're going to have, you know everything's 20% off, like, additional 20% off, or 30, or 40, or whatever, and that's cool, I don't give a fuck, like, it's just a treasure hunt, I'm not going in there, like, looking for a particular item, because I feel like, if you're going somewhere to look for a particular item, um, it's just hard to do, it's not fun, because you're just gonna be wasting your time, because most of the time, I feel like you're not gonna find that, but, like, even though, there are occasions where you do find that that specific thing you're looking for. Like, it feels fucking amazing. But all the other times, it's like, ah, oh, fuck, I wasted all this time trying to look for this one thing. No, it's just not worth it to me no more. So I'd rather just go in there just, like, looking for a deal in general. So you can always find those, which is cool. So, boom. Oh, shit, they got some Jordan 1s. Uh, motherfucking sixty nine ninety nine with an additional 20% off. Fuck that. I'm picking them up or whatever. So I don't know. I don't really Christmas shop either. I'm not good at it. Plus, I'm like, fuck, I bought a plane ticket. This is the first year I bought my own plane ticket to visit my family. Uh, Thankful for that situation. I'm finally an adult now where I can purchase my own plane tickets. Um, So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do for Christmas this year. I normally just do like gift cards or whatever, but I got I got something up my sleeve for when I visit my dad because it's something that we do all the time, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mix it up a bit and I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get a gift for the whole family where all of us can enjoy it. But we'll see, we'll see what happens, man. We still got a little bit of time. I literally leave in 30 days to motherfucking Kentucky. I'm going to kick it with Trump supporters and shit. I'm going to have a good-ass time hanging out with them racist motherfuckers. Just kidding. I don't know if Trump supporters are racist. Um, Media assumes they are. 
because obviously Donald Trump's in some wild shit and there are some racist ass people that uh, follow him. But at the same time, I'm not going to say all oh, because you voted for Donald Trump, you're just racist. Like, nah, you're just fucking weird. But at the same time, whatever, it's life. So I'm going to Kentucky in December to visit my fam. And I'm going to try and drive out to Indiana to visit one of my guys out there. So I'm, like, extremely excited because I'm going to have, like, two weeks off of work. And I haven't had a vacation that long since never. I think since I was working. So I'm really looking forward to that, man. Um, What else, man? Um, Yeah, Black Friday shoppers, you motherfuckers animals. Just shop on, excuse me, just shop online. Why can't you shop online? Like, I understand in-store deals are fucking nuts. Like, you can get a 40-screen or 40-inch uh, smart TV for, like, $250, which is fucking nuts. But, like, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. It's just too much to think about, for me at least. I got better things to do than to stand in line with motherfuckers and get my shoes stepped on. Um, Friendsgiving was, it was short. It seemed short, but it was also kind of crazy. Like, so one of our friends, he was supposed to do a Friendsgiving dinner at his house. Uh, he found out he had to work late. Didn't really tell anybody, right? We found out the last minute that it was canceled. So, boom. As soon as we found out, one of my friends, he was like, fuck, we could just do it at my parents' house. You get some pizzas and beer, fuck, boom, that's it. That's all we got to do. And I'm like, that sounds perfect. So uh, we planned thanks or Friendsgiving at the last minute. Um, We got like four Costco pizzas, and I got a 24 rack of beer, and that was it. Uh, I think it was like 15 of us at his house. And we just kicking it and like, you know, had people that ain't seen each other in a minute, just hanging out, conversing, conversing, conversating, having a good time. His parents are there. I enjoy seeing his mom and dad because obviously I grew up with this dude and, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a great time of everybody connecting and talking and just enjoying each other's company. And then, you know, we did that for about two hours. And after that, we went out to the bars. The first bar we went to was Engine House 9 on 6th Ave in Tacoma. Uh, We get there. It's packed as fuck. And then, like, the longer we're there, we notice outside there's, like, a fat fucking line to get in. And I'm like, dude, this is fucking crazy. And they have it, like, they had it way more regulated. Because the years before that, they just have it jam-packed. And, like, just people fucking shoulder to shoulder no line just everybody's inside but finally this year they're kind of like are we gonna regulate this shit there's not too many people so yeah it was fun man i had you know obviously too much beer because i last night was just a beer night i didn't drink no hard i think i drank like i had a pool of whiskey last night and then uh drank beer for the rest of the night Hey, let me tell you, man, when you drink a lot of beer on top of eating a bunch of pizza, you feel like shit. And I was feeling like shit at around like 1130. And so we're at E9 and a bunch of people went to uh, this other bar called O'Malley's, this Irish pub. And um, so I leave E9 because I'm like, my stomach feels like shit. I need to fart and burp, get all this gas out of me. So I walked out of E9 by myself so I can get some fresh air and uh, walked into O'Malley's. And then once I got to O'Malley's, I was like, dog, I'm I'm fucked up right now. I need to, um, I'm fucked up. I need to go home. And it was literally like 1140. So I texted one of my buddies. He was like, yeah, I'm about to head home because I rode in with him. He said, yeah, I'm about to head home. I was like, can I catch a ride back home with you? And he was like, yep. I was like, fuck yeah. So. I went home. I literally got home at like 11.45. Didn't even stay out that late. Uh, yeah, and then I went to bed, man. Woke up, had a banging headache, and drank some water. Went to the gym. Uh, it was just funny because 
I just like Friendsgiving, like the night before Thanksgiving. Um, the night before Thanksgiving, it's just fun because you see a lot of people you haven't seen in a long time because people come back home and shit like that. Like I work in Seattle, <clears throat> but I still live in Tacoma, like my hometown, basically. I live, I'm from Lakewood, Washington, but I live in Tacoma, which is like that, like literally next door. And, uh, and, um, yeah, so, um, a lot, and, like, a bunch of other people, they, like, either move, like, different places, different towns, like, oh, they live in Seattle now, or Bellevue, or fucking Portland, I don't fucking know, like, shit like that, you know, and then everybody comes back home, and it's fucking mayhem, so, it was just, it was a good time, man, um, I enjoyed myself. And, uh, yeah, man, that was it. And then today, Thanksgiving at my cousin's house and my, my brother's house. And, um, family is awesome, you know? Uh, tomorrow, though, uh, Black Friday, especially, uh, we are going to a Apple Cup party. So, one of my friends, um, his roommate... His parents have his house out out in yonder. He was like, I'm just going to have an apple cup party at my parents' house. Because, you know, it's spacious. They don't really have people there too often. So, you know, it would be cool if we just had a little party there. They'd enjoy that because, you know, people don't really use up that house too much. Except them two that still live there. Because, obviously, their kids are grown and out the house. So, boom. We get invited to this party for the apple cup tomorrow. And, um, I'm excited because technically, you know, I'm like a Husky fan. I have to be a Husky fan. So for those of you that are listening to the podcast that aren't from Seattle, Washington, or aren't from Washington state in general, um, there's a rivalry. The Apple cup is a rivalry game and it's between the Washington state university Cougars and the university of Washington motherfucking Huskies. And, um, Yeah, it's either in Seattle or it's in Pullman. This year it's in Pullman, so we're going to watch some motherfucking shit on TV. And that's it. So I'm a, I'm a Husky fan at heart. I'm, I'm like obligated to be a Husky fan because of the connections that I have to UW. Um, a lot of my friends went to UW. My cousin graduated from UW twice. Uh, <laughs> got her master's there. And then yeah, plus I'm on I'm, I'm I live on the western in western Washington, on the west side of the mountains. If you're like a Wazoo fan and you're from western Washington and didn't go to Wazoo, you're fucking weird. It's like straight up, it doesn't even make sense. If you have no connection to Wazoo and you live in western Washington and you're a Wazoo fan, you're a fucking weirdo. And that's that. That's how we do it. That's how we do it over here. Um Yeah, so we're going to do that. Games at like 12.30 tomorrow. So me and one of my guys, we're going to leave at like 9 in the morning tomorrow. And it's going to be a rough one because day drinking is rough. Um, because obviously, it's what we're going to do. It's going to be a house party during the day, watching football, beers all around. Um, yeah, so that's why I'm podcasting now because I know I'm not going to be in the shape to do it on Saturday. I'm going to be probably sleeping all day or something. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to hang tomorrow. That's why my podcast now take my black ass to sleep, and then do my day tomorrow. So, um, yeah, man. What else am I even talking about? What else was I even talking about? I don't even know what the fuck I was even talking about. I just want to say what's up to you guys, checking on you, and say happy Thanksgiving, and enjoy your time with your fam. I just want to you know get you caught up in life. Uh, speaking of life and getting caught up, I was at the bar last night. Right, and I don't know if this is a regular thing, but like this older lady, right? I'm not, I'm not fucking lying to you guys. It might have been my pants that I was wearing. I bought a new pair of Levi's, right? They're five fourteen Levi's, and you know sometimes I wear thirty four waist jeans. They fit a little tighter, like not like not like tight jeans, but like they fit a little 
they fit more. They're more slim. I like the slim, skinny look in jeans. I don't like my jeans too baggy. I don't like that shit no more. So, like, I, I'll wear 34 waist sometimes. I like the slimmer fit. And, uh, you know, I maybe mean, I was looking good. You know, the girls, some of the girls I ran into at the bar last night, they're like, hey, you got a nice butt in those jeans. And I was like, hey, thank you. Thank you for noticing my butt cheeks in these jeans, lady. I wore them for you. Right? Whatever. Not a big deal. Anyways, uh, I was like, being stared down by like this middle-aged woman like a motherfucking cougar she wasn't even a cougar though she was kind of like a mountain lion you know i don't know i felt like a mountain lion that's like a little older version of a cougar you know she was a little older but she kept like looking at me like with the sexual eyes like she wanted to like make out with me right then and there but her husband was there but like i always caught her looking because you know, like, when you're in places and you can feel someone staring at you and then you look in that direction for some strange reason, you know? Like, subconsciously, you look in the direction of the person that's staring at you and you make that weird, awkward eye contact and, like, you can see the way she's looking at you and you're like, oh, yeah, you want my goods right now. You want the young stallion in your face right now. But, obviously, she's with her husband and kids. You can't act upon those type of things. That's just wrong. Right. But I'm just saying um, it's weird. Middle aged women are weird. They're not weird. They're just a little different. You know, they know what they want. You know, you know, they can be in a marriage, married to some guy for 30 years. They're married to that motherfucker because of the kids. You know, if the kids weren't there, if he said, fuck it, I want a divorce and they got one. And that motherfucker was there. She was just there by herself with her older motherfucking friends. And it was just them. It would been game on, motherfuckers. They would have been game on. Right there from the start. It would have been like, oh, shit. Look at those young stallions. And they're going to make a bet with themselves. Right? With their group. Like, Sally, I bet you you can't take home Jamal over there. That black boy. Yeah, I bet you can't take him home. And they make a little bet. And then next thing you know. You get a little flirtatious with this old ass lady, and then some weird shit happens. Happens every time. Now, me on the other hand, I'm just, I'm a really shy person sometimes. Depends. Depends on my day. Like, it's certain moods. Certain moods I'm in, I can be an extrovert or an introvert. It's strange. I'm a fucking weirdo at times, but I understand that. I embrace it. But with older women, I'm really shy and intimidated because they just have so much. They know so much information. They know so many things I don't know. And I'm like, fuck, we're not on the same playing field. I don't know if I can be able to handle this older woman trying to caress my ear. Would I just break under pressure? Is that more embarrassing? Or would she be able to be like, hey, I know you're a young stallion. But this old cat can teach you some things. If you get embarrassed because you can't hang. Because she knows things I don't know. And then she'll just like be cool with it. Because she knows I'm just a young stallion. Working my way up to be a be a old ox. You know? I don't know. Fucking, I don't fucking know. My roommate's upstairs watching movies. And I'm down here podcasting. Nothing I'm saying right now is making sense. I'm drinking beer. But, um, yeah, man, <sighs> I hope you guys' Thanksgiving was amazing. Mine was amazing. Um, there's a lot of things I can take from it, you know, like, uh, don't forget about family. Put more of an effort to see people in your life, you know, um, it may get hard sometimes, but still try and do it. Um, say no to drama. I know there's a lot of families out there that have that family drama, you know, that unnecessary shit, but you as an individual, just, just say no to that shit. Try your best to be like, you guys need to grow up or try and fix these things. Try your best to try and help them fix the situation. But if they're stubborn as fuck, which in most occasions they are, just leave it be and just do your thing. Do the best that you can to keep yourself happy and... You know, 
Who knows, man? It's just a weird thing. Life is weird. Life is strange. That's all I can really tell you, man. Um... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was hella quiet. Um, oh, no, I got texted. Texted. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and let y'all motherfuckers go. I just want to check in on you guys. Say hello on this Thanksgiving day. Say happy Thanksgiving. Stay out of trouble. Watch sports. If you're working tomorrow, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but my job ain't one. Uh, What else, man? I'm just... Nah, I'm just fucking around, you know. I feel... I feel like people need to show more love and respect to people that work in retail. Because retail is a hard motherfucking job during the holidays. I'll tell you that much. Because I used to work at Target when I was like 16, literally 10 years ago. And um, I was a cart pusher, right? During this part of the year, it was shitty as fuck because they only would hire or they only would work like two of us. No, one of us. And then, like, they'll try and, like, layer two of us as, like, shift switched. But, like, when it was just one of us and all those fucking carts outside that we had to get and bring in, it was bullshit. And um, what I do now, ever so often, I'm at, like, Costco or, like, a fucking store. And there's, like, a cart by me. And I'm, and I'm using a cart. I'll bring that cart and, like, my cart. And I'll, like, I'll put it back. I'll put it in that little cart area thing, that cart parking spot thing. Because it's like, it's fucking, I don't understand people that get carts and they just leave them. Like, they just leave them in the fucking parking lot. Like, people like that really irk my, like, they irk my shit. Like, there's people in this world that are really shitty and, incon- like, inconsiderate as fuck. And I don't understand why they're like that. Like, who the fuck are you people? Like, put your cart back. Put your cart in the designated cart area. Like, who the fuck do you think you are where you can just put that cart on the curb and just understand it's not going to go anywhere, but you can just, like, make this kid, fucking 16, 17-year-old kid, run around the whole entire fucking parking lot getting all these fucking park or fucking carts because you don't know how to put it in the designated area because you're a shit-stained person, you know? People like that really get under my fucking skin. Why? Because I was that 16-year-old kid that had to get all those fucking carts everywhere because people didn't know how to put them back. It's just rude. It doesn't even make sense. Like, people in this world act like people that do jobs such as retail or maybe a fucking uh, waitress or a waiter. People where you have to, like, kind of serve people in a sense. They just treat them like fucking animals. And it's like, why do you people do that type of shit? Like, that is, it's because that customer is always right type of shit. And businesses need to stop doing that shit because you're giving these customers too much power where they're going to start treating some employees like shit because they feel like well i deserve better service or i deserve fucking this and that blah blah blah. i feel like i am the fucking king so i'm gonna treat your employee like shit because obviously he has to do what i tell him to do and there's people out there and that's where i like that and you need to just fucking say no stop it because people like that are fucking shitty like if i had a store let's say for instance i own a motherfucking target and the motherfucker's getting loud at me at the cash register because um, there was a sticker on some pants that said nineteen ninety nine, but it rang up as twenty nine ninety nine, and I was just like, "Hey, the sticker is just the wrong sticker. I'm sorry, but these aren't these these jeans aren't twenty dollars, right?" And they want to try and get bugging loud with me because I told them the right information, and they're like, "Well, the sticker says nineteen ninety nine," and I would be like, "Well, my fists say I will." Throw these hands on you if you don't stop yelling at me about this fucking sticker. So you can put these jeans back or you can pay the twenty nine ninety nine. Because it's like people out man, people motherfuckers motherfuckers acting crazy. People acting crazy for no reason because they just feel like they have rights to everything. And that's the only only fucking problem with America at this at this point right now is people feel like they have rights to everything. Like there's like they can't they can't, like, be wrong, or they can't have somebody say no to them, or shit can't go their way, you know what I mean? Like, life is not fair, uh, and that's one thing I learned from this Donald Trump situation, life isn't fair, but at the same time, I didn't, I didn't fucking vote for Hillary Clinton, 
And so I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I'm voting for Gary Johnson. And if for me not voting for Hillary, chances are fucking Donald Trump could be the president, right? I, I was fine with that, right? Because literally three million, over three million people voted for Gary Johnson. If those three million people were just like, fuck it, I'm going to vote for the winning team, which would have been either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, we would have probably... We might have we might have had Hillary Clinton as our president right now, but people just want to vote for the winning team, and that's what's fucking up everything. Um, rather than voting for yourself, like what the fuck? Um, so that's why Donald Trump is the president, and then like people are having protests and shit about and breaking shit because he's our president. Yeah, it makes sense why you're angry because you know he promoted some bullshit during his race and um he has a lot of a lot of fucking racist people following him right he doesn't really acknowledge it which i'd be peeled about it too but like some motherfuckers is just throwing way too much of a temper tantrum over this shit me personally give the motherfucker a chance see what happens and that's it like people are acting like we're about to be slaves or something because he's the president like get the fuck out of here He's not making my lunch every day. You know what I mean? He's not turning my alarm clock on for me to get to work on time. You know what I'm saying? He's not in here working 40 hours a week. You know what I mean? Not for me. He's not paying my bills. Like, he's not doing shit for me. So, if he's not going to stop me from doing that, then I don't give a fuck about what he's doing. You know what I mean? Um, Our social security is already fucked up, right? For my generation. Thanks to the baby boomers. Thank you guys for fucking us up. Anyways, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm, I got a 401k plan. It's probably going to go to shit by the time I'm 65, but Hey, I'm at least going to try it out, you know? Uh, and I'm going to keep trying to better my career so I can get to a point in time where, Hey, maybe I'm rich as fuck and I can save a million dollars in my savings account, or I can just work forever and be like, fuck it. I can quit whenever I want, but I'm bored as fuck. I'm gonna work. I don't know. I'm just rambling on right now, but I'm just saying, we don't know. We don't know if he's gonna be a shitty president yet. People is people are crying and shit, and then they ain't even he ain't even got a motherfucking even in the office yet. People fucking shedding tears and shit, crying their little brains out, like you know, like the world's gonna end. Nobody even knows what the fuck's gonna happen. You know what I mean? So I'm not. Don't stress about nothing in life. You have no control over. That's that's what I'm trying to say. If you don't have control over this shit, who cares about it? Just shut up. Do your motherfucking thing, live your life, enjoy your life, appreciate the little things. Because if you think about it, you could have been born in North Korea and shit could have been really fucked up for you. So, think about that. Um, so, with that, I'm at about 48 motherfucking minutes. All I gotta say is, appreciate your family, appreciate your friends, appreciate everything in life. Appreciate the small things, the big things. Appreciate having tomorrow off. If you're off tomorrow, if you're not off tomorrow, which keep fucking grinding and appreciate that you have a fucking job, you know? So, um, oh yeah, and shout out to the guy I sat next to. So, I popped my tire on my car the other day, like like two weeks ago, right? And then I saw so I finally got my tire in and got it put on my rim. And I got my fucking shit back together. I don't look like no motherfucking chump on the freeway no more. And I was talking to this guy. Right, he was like subliminally talking about his wife, and like he just seemed like really unhappy because he had to take had to use so much effort to keep her happy and keep the family together, and they like just to get by. And I'm like, man, I just try to give him words of encouragement, man. Like, but my one of my words that I said to this dude, I was just like, you know, I don't got time for negative people. I leave negative people where they're at. And that's how I live in my life. If there's people that are holding me back, um, I don't fuck with them. Because it's just, you're wasting my time. Um, That's it. I'm just at a different point in my life. And I don't have people, I don't have time for things like that. And like I also don't date women that are used to being waited on hand and foot. Because I'm just like, nah, I don't got time for that shit either. Uh, Because it's like... You date these princesses or these princes, I don't know, um, that are used to getting what they want when they want it. And then then they expect you to do that. And um, let's be honest, man. 
that type of shit is fucking, it's silly, it's stressful, it's dumb, unless you're rich as fuck and you want to be that type of person because, you know, you might not have the self-esteem to uh, think of yourself to be able to handle your shit on your own or be alone and you need that arm candy or that person there to keep you happy, like, I'm not the type of person that needs somebody to keep me happy or to make, that I need somebody to make me feel whole, you know what I mean, I'm very independent. Sort of. I have a roommate. I'm not that independent, but I'm pretty independent, you know? So, I was talking to this dude, and, you know, he was just kind of hinting towards that, you know, things just wasn't right. He wasn't really, you know, he's just so stressed out all the time, trying to keep things together, and hinting that, you know, he wasn't that happy. And I just felt bad for the dude. So, for any of you motherfuckers out there that are in these shitty-ass marriages because your spouse is a shitty person... And kind of like puts the blame on you and expects you to do everything and they don't put effort in anything. You motherfuckers need to get a divorce. And with that, have a motherfucking good night.